let's talk about the future of work. <laughs> Big topic. Yeah, so first, if you don't know what auto GPT is, a um, bit of background. It's You can think of it as um, an agent that uses a large language model as its brain. Um, it's, it's best thought of as a user sitting at a computer. It has its own thoughts, it makes its own plans, and interacts with the system based on its own goals. So I, ha I have a question, Torin, if just before you skip. Uh, I'm not sure everybody yeah. are aware uh, or know, but I think many people wanted to ask, uh, what, what, can you share more about uh, Octopus? <laughs> What's the thinking behind it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no one's actually asking this before. Um, I was inspired by a book um, by Peter Godfrey Smith called Other Minds. And if you've not read this book, I highly recommend it. It talks about octopuses and, and cephalopods and how they are such an intelligent creature, but, but so completely different to anything that we, that we can imagine. You know, their nervous system is throughout their whole body. They almost have multiple brains. You know, their arms are almost like AI agents that <laughs> communicate with the, the brain and the head. Um, and, yeah, the author of this book says that, you know, these creatures are the closest we may ever come to studying, you know, an intelligent angel, uh, alien. Um, and I think this is also very, very appropriate for AI as well. You can see. Cool. Thanks for sharing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I first released OSGPT in March, um, on April Fool's Day. Uh, <laughs> I posted this video on Twitter of it uh, running through just a simple Python script that, had, that I'd created some mistakes in using AI, using LLMs. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll give you a, a watch if you haven't seen it before. Reading the basicmath.py file to evaluate and improve it. Evaluating the code for syntax errors and logic issues. Improving the code based on the evaluation suggestions. Writing tests for the functions in basicmath.py. Appending the tests to the basicmath.py file. Executing the basic math.py file to test the code. Fixing the syntax issue with the calc underscore circumference function. Saving the updated code and tests to the basic math.py file. Executing the updated basic math.py file to test the code. The code in basicmath.py has been successfully evaluated, improved, and tested. The task is now complete. So, so Torin, I'm, I'm curious, like, why did you choose this uh, specific uh, demo? And also uh, about, I think you're using, like, 11 labs. Um, so yeah. Like, what, what brought you to use that? Like, I guess it's, um, it's part of the, the vibe of the, of the video. And I'd love to hear your thoughts about these two. Yeah. 11 labs, I, I started using myself when I was, um, I, I'd made this AI uh, newsletter, AI generated newsletter to like keep up to date with the latest AI news. This is kind of where all the GPT actually originally came from. And I was playing about the idea of an AI generated podcast. You know, you could take this so far and have, you know, everyone having personal podcasts and things like this, you know, playing about that and found 11 Labs and they're, they're super cool. Really realistic, especially for like narration and like audiobook type thing, it's incredible. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, this specific test, I mean, you know, I'm a programmer, game developer. Uh, I thought it's a, you know, it's like one of the final challenges, I would say. I mean, this is obviously very, very basic, but this is one of the final challenges for AI is like to comprehend and understand like how programming works. It's such like a large, you know, high level overview is required. It's such a large task. Um, you know, loads of different steps. This really kind of shows its thought process, its self-criticism, seeing it makes mistakes and seeing how to fix them. So it's a good way to demonstrate that. Got it. So, 
What's next for GPT? So the core vision for this project, the reason that I open sourced it and, and wanted to make this available to everyone, is the fact that you know we're this is a really, really powerful technology. And it, there's no doubt it's going to completely change the future of humanity. If this technology was developed like something like AutoGPT was developed by a big corporation, you can see the logical next step would be to automate all, away all of their work and replace all their employees. Um, and they wouldn't want to release that because that would, they would lose their advantage, wouldn't make sense. So the vision behind this has always been to try and level that playing field, give everyone access to this technology and uh, allow everyone to reap the benefits. But um, up until now, this has not really been the case. AutoGPT is loved by programmers, but you know, to be able to actually run it, you have to install Git, go in the repository, you know, know how to use Python or at least set it up on your computer and, and run it through a command line, which is pretty crazy. So the solution to that is uh, a web interface, desktop applications, and later on, mobile applications. So first look at what we've been working on. Um, we want to make something really non-technical. We'll probably go through loads of iterations of this because, you know, whenever programmers work on something, it's always too technical. It's so difficult to think like, you know, what would my mother be able to use? Um, and this is a core focus. We'll always be coming back to that. So everyone is equally at an advantage. Can you share a bit, uh, like, about the thinking behind this uh, web interface? Like, uh, if you can go for one or two examples or parts or what was important in designing it, anything you'd like to share about the thinking behind uh, building this interface? Yeah. I mean, there's so much to it. You know, it, we're distilling down a very complex process. Like, if you've used the command line interface, you've seen that demo, there's a load of information, and it's all really cool information. Like, if you're, if you're a bit of a nerd like me, you look at that and be like, oh, yeah, I want, I want all of that. But, you know, the user, the everyday person, doesn't, doesn't want all of that. So deciding, like, what information is key and allowing an advanced user to drill down into the, the juicy bit is, is really key here. Um, so... We've tried to, you know, follow that ethos and everything. We've got these uh, these cards in the middle. You can actually see it better down here, uh, where you've got the thoughts. You know, you can just have something like this that says it's thinking, or you can click on an arrow and expand down and find out exactly what it's thinking and why it's thinking that. You have a Google search. You can see roughly what it's doing, but you can drill down and see. Okay, it's gone to this website. It's seen these really specific results. If you want it. Cool, got it. Yeah. And yeah, mobile app, similar, similar frame. So this is exciting. Basically, you're saying that you want to enable anyone from whether mobile or web to be able to call uh, AutoGPT and be able to see also all the processes that's happening, um, similar to how developer would see it from the command line until today, something like that, right? Exactly, yeah, if they want to. But they don't need to. That's the important thing. You know, you shouldn't to need to get technical to be able to use an AI agent. I, you know, I want a child to be able to use it. Like, <laughs> they should, if a kid wants to be able to make a video game, why not? Let, let them do it. You know, this would be a wonderful future. Got it. And so, yeah, uh, moving on to plugins. So, um, plugins can be thought of as abilities for GPT. These are, if if AutoGPT is the user, not the computer, then an ability or a plugin is the software installed. Or, you know, that could be something very simple, but it could be a, a really advanced software. That software could use AI. Think of, you know, Photoshop that has, you know, intelligent algorithms built into it and big processes taking part. Uh, here you can see on Discord all of the amazing plugins people are working on. There's so many. Uh, and it's so great to see. Yeah, that's amazing. I also um, spend a lot of time in the Discord and, and see what people are working on. And I have to say, at this point, like it's 
that really raises a question. Are, is AutoGPT basically competing with ChatGPT because we're talking about the web interface, the mobile interface, uh, plugins, and uh, like I would like to pick your yeah. mind about that. It's a very good question. I love this question. Um, you can, yeah, if you think of um, this scenario with ChatGPT with plugins, then AutoGPT is, is kind of another layer on top of that. AutoGPT is, is the user using ChatGPT with these plugins. You know, it's the decision maker and it could be sitting down using this for hours in the same way a person would be. So, so it's that extra layer on top. So would you say like, it would be like, kind of accurate to say that you, you, you expect AutoGPT to be more autonomous. Yeah, exactly. Autonomous and planning and, you know, executing a series of steps and a plan, not just carrying out a task. Okay. I guess that raised a lot of other questions, but uh, I guess we have uh, plenty of time later and uh, people can ask mm. uh, maybe later on. Cool. Let's yeah. move on. And so, yeah. Um, Again, getting back to accessibility, currently plugins are GitHub repositories. Um, that's not good. <laughs> so solution to that is uh, an abilities hub, something built into the user interface, super easy, just plug and play, select the things that, that you want. And plugins can be developed by the community and by businesses. We've had you know, a lot of interest from different businesses that provide a brilliant solutions to different things. and. Uh, you know, lots of people want to to build things for this platform. And it's it's great. Yeah. Okay. So, very big topic: efficacy. So, efficacy is the ability to produce a desired or intended result. Very important for an AI agent to be able to do this. Um, quite a lot of debate online as to whether this is possible, which is very interesting, very exciting to me. Um, at the moment, uh, here are some of the mistakes that AutoGPT can make. You can get stuck in a loop. Uh, you know, it can use placeholders instead of actually what it meant. Um, or just making just really obviously silly decisions. Now, I can think of so many different ways of solving this problem. I'm sure many of you here today can think of far better solutions to these problems. But the question is, how do we know what is the right solution? What is objectively best? You know, do I just test it out and run it a hundred times? Or, you know, how do I actually know? And the solution to that we work on is challenge-driven development. So this is kind of like test-driven development for the future. <laughs> Instead of, um, yeah, I mean, like, so the way this works is defining things that AutoGPT currently can't do. What does it currently trip and fall down on? You know, what, what things is it just terrible at? Defining all these things in a programmatic and objective way and writing a test for them that we know it fails is an amazing step towards solving them. Because once you've got that, you can apply all of this amazing energy we've seen from the tens of thousands of people, developers who have joined the Discord and you know, all these people want to take part, they can try out their novel ideas and solutions, even if it's like so different to what I'm thinking or, you know, what someone else involved in the project is thinking. Um, even if you're not a programmer, you know, you can come to the table with just, uh, you know, this novel idea of, you know, how maybe prompt engineering should work or even what it means to write a test, you know, it's, Every single topic <laughs> you can dig so far down into here. So if I may say, like for me, it really resonates well. Uh, so I think like in software development uh, mm -hmm. 1.0, uh, you could do TDD, like test-driven development, probably a good practice, but really hard to to really practice it. And we're going to talk about it a bit later. And then in software 2.0, when you have like machine learning, neural networks, etc. cetera, uh, specifically, I'm not saying LLM because I'm, I'm talking about like a few years ago intentionally, <laughs> then uh, you can't work without like uh, uh, like data set driven development. You need a statistical model. You have to work with some data set like 
um, a, a, like a training set, a validation set, a test set. And according to that, you, you try to understand if you're progressing or not. And it's very good, by the way, if you have a few variables or a few met metrics that you're using to not only one to verify uh, your, your model be properties and behavior. And then like in software 3.0, then it's also statistical models, et cetera. So uh, now we're evo evolving from uh, 1.0 TDD, 2.0 is like data set driven development. And now we're talking about 3.0, what you're saying is a uh, challenge of driven development, right? Uh, I think, I think mm -hmm. it's a, I, for me, it's a great notion. Yeah, it's really exciting. I think, you know, people all over the world want to take part in something which is, you know, defining the future of our species. And, this is a great way to do that. Awesome. Yeah, so an exciting one is self-improvement. Now there's so much to talk about here. Lots of safety, lots of ethics. But to keep it simple, the first ever pull request on AutoGPT, if you look it up, it was actually by AutoGPT. <laughs> um, the other version of it, uh, it rewrote the entire prompt that it used. Um, that I'd written, uh, that it just thought, threw that completely away, wrote a way better one. And we, we still largely use that today. Um, this is obviously a very simple self-improvement task, you know, a little bit of prompt engineering. Um, but you can quickly see how, you know, this could become very, very powerful in the future, iterating over the code base and using those improvements to make further improvements. So I guess, like, uh, a question I can ask here, like, is it like a, it doesn't work and then suddenly it works and then from there on uh, we're done? Like uh, AutoGPT will start improving itself and we can do, uh, you know, just set aside and, and start using the web interface or the mobile interface and anything that doesn't work, AutoGPT will fix. So I wonder if it's like you expect it to be not working and then suddenly self-improvement is working and from and that's it? Or are there any levels or... Similar to the challenge uh, driven development, maybe there will be like also levels in the challenges. Um, maybe the challenge of self improvement also have some levels. I wonder uh, how you think mm. of it. Yeah, no, it's a very good question. I mean, yes, maybe there will be this moment where suddenly everything changes. Um, but in terms of like what's happening right now, it's, it's very easy for you to take a single method or a file or a prompt, you know, and get it to re engineer something like that. Um, and again, it comes back to, especially with prompts, you know, what's objectively better? We don't know what's objectively better, and neither does AutoGPT. So that's why these challenges are so important, and, and regression tests as well. You know, if AutoGPT makes a change to itself, it can get feedback on that and say, okay, I actually broke something, or, oh, now I'm able to remember better. You know, this is great. Got it. So maybe another, another look at it, maybe there are like a few dimensions of, of self-improvement or the capabilities of AutoGPT managing to work on code or or on it on itself on, on its, its own or rep, repo, for example, maybe like one dimension is how how much what is the context is it able to work on the, on the entire repo at the same time or on this other dimension what is it improving? For example, let's take a relatively easy task. Uh, everything relative uh, of uh, changing the variable names to be more clear or according to some best mm -hmm. practice, maybe then like uh, asking AutoGPT Auto to fix or improve for the entire repo at the same time with some uh, chain of thought or everything that we know about uh, agents and we're going to talk about a bit later. So asking to change the entire, uh, fixing the entire variable names or so, maybe that will work. And then maybe there are other tasks and uh, and, and and that they mentioned. And and I guess like uh, the, the it's it's not going to be like zero to one. Rather like uh, if we think about just these two dimension, then some of these cubes in the two dimension going to be solved one by one until suddenly like this uh, uh, two two uh, like uh, two dimension. There's enough uh, of these cubes that are solved, and suddenly maybe we can solve uh, everything. Like it'll be like a huge self improvement. Uh, I'm just like uh, suggesting a thinking framework. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's there's so much to think about with this. I mean, you know, that example I showed you um, with the the single file of code being iterated on is yeah. it's like you know it's so exciting to watch. You know, I love I was so excited when I first saw that. Um, but it's 
you know, it's not really programming because you have to have this like high level overview. You have to understand like if I change this variable name, you know, that's in six other files. It needs to be connected. Um, you know, I call this function. I need to get the right, you know, data types back. Um, but this is a solvable problem. Like I've played about with it. I know I've spoken to other people who have. You know, we will very soon, I think, have a system where something like AutoGPT can iterate over a, a large code base and and make meaningful changes that work. Cool. So we can go back to this if others have. Uh, will have a question later. Uh, yeah. Let's move on. <laughs> Okay, and finally, yeah, so touched on this a bit before, but this is very, very important. We're on the cusp of entering a new age for humanity with amazing benefits, <laughs> you know, productivity and individual ability is going to skyrocket, but that's only a good thing if everyone gets that benefit. If some people are left behind because they didn't, you know, they don't really they're not very technical, they don't really know how to use computers or program or whatever it is, um, that will end up, we'll end up in a worse world than the one we started with. So it's a big focus of us to make sure the project is is easily usable by everyone. Um, you know, the first step to that is what I've touched on before, you know, making a user interface, don't use the command line interface, <laughs> you know, something people can actually use. But I'm, you know, a much more interesting one is, is prompt engineering. Prompt engineering is, is prevalent in society right now. Everyone is starting to use it. People that don't know how to use computers or, you know, don't know how to program are using it. But it is not intuitive. Like, you have to, especially for things like you know, image generation, if you've done that, you've got to be so specific to get something good. Um, and people work on this problem in amazing ways. But, you know, when we first made Auto GPT, uh, you had to input the name, you had to give it a you know, couple of sentences for like its role, and then five sentences for all the goals that it has to do, and probably in some technically accurate way. And, you know, that was a terrible experience. Um, and it's unnecessary, because large language models, they can prompt themselves. This is what also GPT essentially is. So, you know, we added an extra layer on top of that, and now you can say, write a vegan cookbook make me Flappy Bird, and it will decide how best to prompt itself. Yeah. It's not down to the user. That's awesome. Um, so I think we'll just, if, if someone has maybe one question, because we're going to do like a Q&A session, but maybe mm -hmm. someone really has uh, some, can't wait. Is there anyone like that <laughs> want to ask one question? There what, what's, what's, a, what's a good response to people who, who see Auto GPT and immediately just think of like evil AI taking over. I've talked to friends about this and it's their some of their responses have been really negative and I don't have a good optimistic answer for them. I think like this usually when I start talking to people about that, uh, it takes between half an hour to <laughs> many hours uh, because it's really a you know a question that that can be viewed from many directions. Um, there are different technologies that can be used in many ways. And is it like a question about if people could use AI evilly or AI is going to use AI evilly? And so it's, it's really like, I think, a really broad question. And I think it's, it would be a good one uh, when we're getting a bit tired at the end of the hackathon. <laughs> and we're, the beer is, is over there. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so uh, we'll, we'll keep the Q and A later. Um, we'll, you know, we'll have a longer session. I just want to have anybody, anybody had like a question that m must ask. And now I'm going to share. Thank you, Torin, very, very much. Pleasure.